It is early September 2008. A team of scientists is traveling from Vienna, Austria to a remote location in the fictitious state of Arcania. They want to find out whether Arcania conducted a clandestine nuclear explosion some 10 days earlier. If confirmed, this would be a violation of the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, the CTBT. Arcania says that an earthquake is responsible for the suspicious data. Fiducia, Arcania's neighboring state, immediately requested an on-site inspection. Now the Vienna-based Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization, the CTBTO, is sending a team of inspectors to clarify the situation. After 24 hours by train and another 5 hours by bus, the inspectors arrive at the field camp late in the evening. Everyone has to get to work immediately. The place is extremely remote. The next town is several hours away. This would be a typical situation for an inspection. The inspectors need to be entirely self-sufficient for several weeks. Early next morning, a busy routine turns the camp into a hive of activity. It will last for the next three weeks. The inspectors set up their camp, erecting tents and prefabs as field offices and laboratories. Okay. Over the years, the CTBTO has conducted several smaller exercises. Each exercise tested a specific element of an inspection. Now, the organization is simulating the first entire on-site inspection. The scope of the exercise is also unprecedented. Nearly 200 scientists, specialists, diplomats and support staff are participating in it. Over 50 tons of equipment have been sent to the inspection area. Only one day after their arrival, the inspectors start hunting for information. First of all, they have to orient themselves in the unknown terrain. An initial helicopter flight is guaranteed by the treaty and cannot be refused by the inspected state party. However, due to bad weather conditions during the first couple of days, all flights are grounded. Instead, visual observation teams set out by car. All movements in the field are monitored via satellite. Inspectors search for visible anomalies in the area, such as changes in the landscape or vegetation, and they gather any possible evidence they find. On-site inspections verify states' compliance with the comprehensive ban on nuclear testing. For the inspected state party, they are challenge inspections. Member states can request such an inspection when they believe that a state has conducted a nuclear explosion. But this can only be done after the treaty has entered into force. Exercise participants assume the roles of both CTBTO inspectors and representatives of Arcania. For easy identification, the teams wear different colored baseball caps. Inspectors in red, Arcanians in dark blue. Wang Yun is a diplomat from China and works for the CTBTO in Vienna. For the next couple of weeks he will lead a team of 40 inspectors. For him, the purpose of the exercise is to demonstrate one thing. How ready the organization is after 10 years of development, particularly in this field of outside inspection. John Walker from the United Kingdom assumes the role of chief representative of Arcania in the inspection exercise. You learn much more by playing in role rather than just doing what we call tabletops or walkthrough talks or activities. You get much more out of it when people absorb the rules of playing whether the inspectors, escorts or inspector state party representatives. Wang agrees and says that in past exercises they only played the inspector's part. Well, this time the, uh, the challenge is far more realistic and uh, I, I, frankly, I, I feel the pressure but at the same time, I really appreciate the opportunity. 
the first inspection phase gathers speed. Inspectors carry out specific techniques. Small seismometers record possible aftershocks. These mini stations identify disturbances in the geological structures that may have been caused by a nuclear explosion. When these structures resettle, they cause small seismic rumbles with distinct signatures. The seismometers are deployed in a way to cover most of the inspection area. A team of evaluators scrutinizes every inspection activity. Their light blue caps can be seen wherever an inspector goes. They will assess what works and what needs improvement. Refinement of methods and procedures depends on their close observation. After a few days, the wind lets up and the helicopter flight can proceed. New challenges emerge. Arcania doesn't allow the helicopter to fly over certain areas. Flexibility is required and the team has to work around these restrictions. We have, of course, specific instruments we use for the uh, visual observation and I want to start with our main instrument we have, that's a very human instrument, we have our eyes. And of course, our training on all those special natural phenomena we have to look for. The sheer size of the inspection area is a challenge in itself. It measures 1,000 square kilometers. Kazakhstan is hosting this exercise at the former Soviet Union nuclear test site Semipalatinsk. The area provides as realistic a setting as possible. One piece of evidence of a nuclear explosion is elevated gamma radiation levels. On a later flight, airborne radiation surveys will be conducted. Inspectors also measure radiation while driving through the inspection area. Wherever inspectors encounter unusually high radiation levels, they collect vegetation, soil, water and air. All of these samples are later analyzed in the field laboratory. The risk of radiation contamination at this former nuclear test site is real. Possible exposure is kept to a minimum. No one stays in the inspection area for more than six hours per day. When returning from the field, everybody undergoes decontamination procedures. It is crucial to test these procedures in an exercise. Future inspections may face the real risk of exposure to radioactivity. Wang and Walker, as the respective team leaders, meet every evening to discuss the findings of the day. They also plan activities for the next day. These encounters are not always straightforward. As far as we are concerned, it's a breach of procedure. Several teams work in the field every day. FIMS, the Field Information Management System, processes the multitude of data they bring back to the base camp. We want something that is a cross-platform to know between the seismic, the radionuclides, and the magnetic and, um, and different kinds of uh, geological and geophysical techniques. Photos from the visual surveys are one example. During their daily trips, inspectors collect hundreds of photographs. Wang and Walker meet to scan them all. The inspected state party has the right to bar the use of certain photographic material, but only if they consider a photo an infringement of its national security interests. In the field laboratories, the environmental samples are examined for their radioactivity. This may be an indication of a nuclear explosion. A 
A seismic lab collects data from the field stations and forwards the analysis to the central database. Now we are densifying uh, part of the network by three, three component stations uh, around the so-called no access zone at the moment. And the reason for that is we want to be sure what is going on in, in that zone because we, we had no uh, visual access and no physical access to this zone. After 10 days in the field, the first phase of the on-site inspection ends. Wang's inspection team presents their findings in an interim report. They have not found any sign of a recently conducted nuclear explosion. Wang maintains, however, that there are enough reasons to continue the inspection. We were able to localize out of the thousand square kilometers what would be the main or more focused or localized uh, areas of inspection interest. Wang's team sets out to follow those leads with more intrusive techniques. Shallow layers beneath the underground, down to about 5 meters, are examined by measuring deviations in the Earth's magnetic field. For larger areas, this is done from the air, using the so-called MAGBIRD. This helps to locate traces of a nuclear explosion setup, in particular objects in the ground that contain iron. This instrument uses ground penetrating radar to also look into the shallow underground. If inspectors want to take a deeper look down to several hundred meters, they use electricity measurements. This helps to identify possible disturbances in the underground geology, such as the formation of cavities after a nuclear explosion. Visual observation continues throughout the entire inspection. The integration of all inspection techniques helps to narrow down the areas for further examination. For the first time in an exercise, the team samples air from the underground. This is done to detect the radioactive noble gas argon. We can say that it is something like a smoking gun for a nuclear explosion or some event which produces a large number of neutrons. The samples later undergo detailed analysis. The second phase of the inspection ends. It has turned cold again in the Kazakh steppe. While most of the exercise participants try to find some warmth, Wang's inspection team prepares a report with all preliminary findings and supporting evidence. Um, thank you so much. The inspection team shares all findings with the team of Arcania, disagreements notwithstanding. Sure, try to sleep. Yes, please. Let me, uh, the inspected the state party yeah. adds its own comments before the report is and sent to the CTBTO in is Vienna. This is our proposal. Really would have really preferred in a final meeting, Wang and data. Walker then uh, sign the report for their respective teams. Yeah. I can do this as well. Wang's team had set out asking whether or not Arcania had exploded a nuclear device. The answer is no. No telltale signs of a nuclear explosion could be found. Later on they learn that this is correct. The exercise scenario did not include an actual nuclear explosion. exercise comes to an end. The fictitious state of Arcania ceases to exist. Its short-lived presumption helped to attest that the comprehensive nuclear test ban treaty can be verified. For the first time, CTBTO ran a full inspection. The many weeks in the remote location under trying conditions paid off. The team put all essential techniques, methods and procedures to a real test. They now know that they are on the right track, preparing the CTBT on-site inspection regime. The 
exercise demonstrated CTBTO's capacity to launch and conduct an effective on-site inspection. On-site inspections are a powerful and reliable deterrent to any potential violator of the nuclear test ban. This ultimate verification measure makes sure that no nuclear test will go unnoticed. Das Bedania, Kommissar.